Want to make your money work harder? Enjoy another video with Adam Khan, the rational investor on stocks, real estate, and crypto. Subscribe now for your weekly dose of investment insights and hopefully learn a thing or two. Well, let's hope we learn a thing or two today, since that's what it says in the intro. Hello, my YouTube friends, and happy Saturday. I hope you're all doing well. I'm out here in uh, Northern California, but it's raining outside, or I'd be outside like I normally am. We're visiting some family. Hopefully have a really nice Thanksgiving. Should be here a little bit. It's always a lot of fun. Anyway, I got crushed in Target. I don't know about you guys, but it's one of the positions I have in my trading account. I'm going to talk a little bit about it and what I did to try to offset the loss and how I handled it and what I do in my trading account. Now, I do own a little bit in my set it and forget it account. And if I have time, I'm going to go over exactly what's in that portfolio and the percentages of each stock that I carry. So before I forget and before I get into the video, I want to reach out to the sponsor of the video today. It is again my wife, Lily. So thank you for sponsoring the video. Hopefully I can get dinner tonight. She said I could afford to miss a meal no matter how good the video did. So please do me a favor if you could hit that like and subscribe button. It goes a long way to making her happy and continuing the sponsorships of the video and continuing to make dinner, which is really cool because you see, I, I like food. So, so it's nice. It, that's what my sponsor does for me. And like others, there's no link in the description or anything else. Just a simple like would be appreciated. So what happened with Target? What did I decide to do? And where do we go from here? So as you guys know, I have three different accounts. My set it and forget it is safe deposit box account. Another one that's kind of in between some dividends, some investments, some things that I don't really trade a whole lot. And then my trading account. Now, Target was one of the positions in the trading account, and I think you all know it had some terrible earnings and did extremely poorly. Bad news is, I got crushed on the trade. The other bad news is, I decided to sell and move on because I don't have a whole lot of hope that it's going to turn around anytime soon. I do think as a long-term investment, it's just fine, which is why in the set it and forget it account, I haven't done anything, I plan to leave the trade on and not do anything for years. But as a trade, I figure there's a better place for me to use the money currently. Now, the one good thing is it's an account that I consistently sell calls on. So I had sold calls against the shares that I had on, which, although it doesn't feel like a lot of money because uh, Target moved so far so quickly, you do make back something and it does help offset some of the loss. The other reason that I get out in the trading account, and again, I want to specify that these are completely different. They're, they're ones that are an investment I want to own companies in. But an account that's specific to trading, I don't want to spend too much time on something that I'm doing very poorly in. I want to try to focus on the ones I'm more comfortable with that I think will have success. You know, I've talked about Boeing a lot, and I know it's been drifting against me, but a lot different because the whole way down, I've been able to sell enough calls to offset the losses to where I'm actually not even really down any money and making the purchase price better and better and better all along the way. So while Boeing is beginning to drift the other way, it, as little as it's moved up, I am actually in the green now, whereas Target moves so badly to the downside. And since I don't really see it coming back for at least another quarter, there's no reason to continue to try to make something work when it's working against me. Now, as always, I'll give my little disclaimer, and I mean it seriously, as I've said, Please, when you're doing your own investment decisions, you need to do your own research on any financial decision you make and not listen to me. This is just entertainment purposes only. And I just share what works for me. You shouldn't do what I do just because I talk about it or anybody on YouTube for that matter. Now, also, as I get out of the position, I still think that Target's going to have a good Christmas season. I think their earnings for next quarter will look better, and I expect the stock probably to rebound from there. But it's also why I separate the account. I want to distinguish a trade versus an investment. In the investment account, I really believe Target will be just fine over time. I think it's a good company and they'll figure it out. In the trading account, it's going against me and it went so quickly that it's doing poorly that it's better to focus on the things that I'm trading well and having success on than getting too upset and too emotional about one that's not doing well. So it's okay to take a loss and move on and stick with things that are doing better than that. So what did I replace the position with? 
I actually started a position in Google because I really like the Department of Justice and what's going on there. And I don't mean I like it. I think the Department of Justice has way overstepped in their ruling. My understanding, and now this is just my understanding from things I've read and things I've seen, I don't know how reliable and how how great the the information's from. from. And one of them was uh, actually Joseph Carlton, who who I know I've mentioned before him and Ryan and Russ and Ari, and I, I think all of these guys do great content. But one of the things he was talking about is how I feel as well, which is the Department of Justice has gone way too far. So now my understanding is originally their big complaint was they're paying Apple too much money to be the default search when you get an iPhone. Fair enough. Google says okay to this and agrees to not continue paying Apple and work a different solution to try to continue to grow their business. Department of Justice is not happy with that and decides they need to spin off Chrome. On top of spinning off Chrome, and this is where they go beyond too far in my mind, they also want to start a government committee to start monitoring the changes that Google want to make on any of their search, and they have to get it approved with them before they make these changes. That seems ridiculous. What other company is there a specific section of the government created just to monitor a private companies' decisions on how to change their business model to improve their business. And at least from my standpoint, I want Google to be the default search engine. I think it's the best one out there. I like using it. And if I want to use another, it's easy enough to put their thing in the, the little bar up top and use whatever search engine I want. To me, this seems so silly. It seems like somebody's got a bug up their butt for Google that they're literally trying to go after them. In the meantime, it's pushing the stock down enough that it's making the valuation seem really attractive to me. And unlike Target, if it continues to go lower, I'll feel a little more comfortable holding that position and continuing to trade it. Now, the negative is the, the options have very low volatility, so you don't get a lot of money by selling calls or puts for it. I, I still do it because I feel like I, collecting money in terms of selling options is a good, good works well for me. Um, but it doesn't really give a lot of money for the options to really make it worth the value to do it in some way. But I don't understand the Department of Justice and what their goal is. So what they've done is they've taken Chrome, which doesn't really generate revenue, and asked them to spin that off because they can't value it fairly because the real value of Chrome is it works in their ecosystem to help all of it work better. So if another company takes it, it's almost forcing for another company to start pushing their own search engine to compete with Google more than anything else, because why would Google partnership with Chrome that works in their in in ecosystem driving their business? The other company is not going to want that, and Google's not going to want the other company to really understand their business like that. You're then taking a company that they've worked 10 years on, that they know how it operates and runs and works, and giving it to some other company that doesn't have that experience or understand it and telling them now to run it. Both sides are going to do poorly here, and you and me are also as well, because we're going to lose a good search engine because the Department of Justice is seeing something that, that they see as a problem. For me, what the problem is, is they're, they're undermining and not understanding the whole reason that the monopoly laws were set in place. You know, back in... Boy, it was probably the 70s when Standard Oil was buying up all the gas stations, putting it under one umbrella, and then they started gouging customers and making too much money. That's a reason for a monopoly law. You don't want a company to get so big that they end up gouging the public. These new companies are doing the opposite. What's so great about the Amazons and the Googles and the Metas and the other ones in these spaces is as they're getting bigger, they're making the prices and things better for the consumer. They make it less expensive. They make it easier to access. Search for the consumer is actually free. So I'm not really sure why they see this as a monopolistic business, just because it's hard to compete for others. It's not a negative to the consumer. The only negative is, of course, they're going to push their own products, and whoever's advertising the most is going to get the best spot in the search. I understand that negative. But it is a free search. It's like using a dictionary and saying the company that's the biggest is putting their own rhetoric in the dictionary or, or if they were doing thesaurus 
or the almanac or things of that nature, which they probably were. So I don't really see what the negative here is of giving a free search engine and being the one that dominates that space. If it's hard for another company to compete, oh well, it still isn't driving up the cost for consumers. It's not making things tougher. It's not making things more expensive. At least I don't feel taken advantage of. So what is the problem with the monopoly that these companies might be making? I could understand if Amazon ended putting out a business, Walmart and Target and Kohl's and every competitor, and then started increasing margins to rip people off. I still don't think that's the goal. I think their goal is to drive prices down and make things more affordable for people. And I see that as a net good. So maybe the government people and the people on the Department of Justice should really look at the benefit or the negative to the consumer. And I get that they're arguing that there's some negative here. And if you guys know something that I don't, that you see it as a negative, that Google has the space that they do, by all means, put it in the comments. Let me know what's going on or why you see it as a problem, because I'd love to understand it better. I just think somebody's got a bug up their butt going after Google. It's interesting that they dropped the charges against Meta and stopped going after them a lot of ways and seem to be targeting TikTok because they're out of China and maybe even helping Meta. So I worry that the government's getting too enmeshed in these private companies trying to make decisions to help or hurt the companies that they actually like or don't like. I even bought a little bit more Amazon and a little bit more Meta here, even though those are two of my largest positions, along with Google and Chevron and Starbucks, I think. Um, either way, I like the valuation. I like that they've come off the tops a little bit. And in the trading account, I'll play around with them a bit because I'm super comfortable owning these positions and they work out over time. Anyway, I'm going to keep this one a little bit short. I do have a 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time live scheduled for tomorrow. I think I'll be able to do it. Please forgive me if I can't make it. I am actually visiting with family, which is why I'm keeping this one short. I'm going to go hang out and spend some time with all of them. Um, I, I think we'll be able to meet up tomorrow. But again, I apologize if not, which is why I haven't done a bunch of shorts to promote it like sometimes I do. Um, do a favor, hit that thumbs up button, like, subscribe, make some comments in the section. I hope you guys are having a great weekend.